And the AJHL finals kicked off tonight in Spruce Grove. Yeah, and Spruce had a little bit of a rest too while they waited for Camrose to eliminate Okotoks in the South Division final. Now it's all about who is the best team in this league in the best of seven series. Camrose is the underdogs in this one as Spruce Grove seemed unstoppable in the season. But it's the Kodiaks who strike first. John Lidget sets up Mario Bollard on the power play. It's one nothing codes. Another Camrose power play, and Luke Chalier is right there for the rebound. Camrose takes a two-goal lead. A few minutes later, the Saints respond. Nicholas Bourgeois tips in with 50 seconds left in the period. 2-1 Kodiaks. Second period, Camrose man advantage. John Lidget gets it to Nolan Kaiser. One-timer squeaks through. 3-1. Now in the third, Dalen Flett. That's a weak one in from Scott Allen. It bounces right through. We've got a one-goal game. Camrose is desperately trying to hold that lead for seven more minutes when Josh Coper finds the puck in front. Tie game. Overtime and Nicholas Bourgeois with a spinorama around the demon in the corner walks out and shoves it home. Game one goes to Spruce Grove 4-3. The Kodiaks gave up a two-goal lead and go on to lose in overtime. We can be sure that this will be an entertaining series with the way these two teams played tonight. We're definitely happy to, to get the win. You know, we put a lot of rubber towards our net and, uh, you know, a great individual effort by uh, Nick Bourgeois at the end there for a you know, highlight reel overtime winner. You know, you can't draw it up like that. It, it's a loss, but uh, it's, uh, I guess, a race to four. We've been there before. We've lost games before. Uh, I thought we were mentally fatigued and we got to be a lot better uh, tomorrow. And uh, when you look at the big picture, uh, we should have won. From the Junior A final in the Grove to the best of Junior B down in Leduc. The Riggers hosting Provincials this weekend, taking on Cold Lake this afternoon. 2-1 Leduc late second. Cold Lake power play pays off. And Corey Lester all in by himself in tight. They're tied at two. Early third, Riggers Wayne Gatza out wide, and he somehow finds a streaking Greg Wicharuk. Make it 3-2, Leduc. Late game, Cold Lake, point shot. Puck goes straight up on the rebound, and Dennis Kadrin blasting it home through the pile. Game ends 3-3. The provincial final goes Sunday at 1.30. The Calgary Flames aren't mathematically eliminated from the playoffs just yet, but they need every point they can get in the home stretch. Visiting the St. Louis Blues tonight, second period, Blues up 1-0 on the power play. David Backus is right on the doorstep and he nets his 100th career goal. You think that's big? Watch this man. Jerome McGinley does all the dirty work and drives to the net and he gets his 999th career goal. It's 2-1. Oh wait, there's more now tied at 2. Jerome McGinley gets the break. He scores his 1,000th career goal. Take that, David Backus. That's the game winner, 3-2, your final. NHL tonight, Philly doubled New Jersey 4-2, Chicago took Columbus 4-3 in a shootout, and 4-3 Colorado over Phoenix in the shootout. The Rush played their very first of three in a row against the Colorado Mammoth tonight at Rexall Place. John Grant starts things off for Colorado. Rush now ahead 2-1 on the penalty kill. Corey Small gets around two defenders and rifles it in for his 16th of the season. Nice shot. How about this for a Rush fan? Bet you weren't thinking that Grandma likes lacrosse this much. Skip ahead, 7-4 Rush Small comes out of the corner and strikes again. His second highlight reel goal of the night. Now 9-4 Rush when Alex Gage gets one through on Matt Disher. 11-6 Edmonton and Small strikes again. Sweet shot in the air. Great oh. night for him. That's his third goal. The NLL Player of the Week shows why he deserves the honors here. Zach Greer with a beauty 13-6. Scott Evans looks like he's out for a leisurely stroll here until he fires one home. It's his fourth of the night, and the rush take it 14-10. Corey Small gets eight points on the night, three goals and five assists. The MVP has to go to Matt Disher, though, because 47 saves were made. The rush play in Colorado tomorrow night at 7. Time now to really switch things up and talk cricket. The World Cup final goes tonight, and let's say millions and millions and millions will be tuning in. Oh, yes! Yes! After the semi-final victory over arch-rival Pakistan, India will take on Sri Lanka. We found a couple of Edmontonians who follow cricket as much as any hockey fan follows the NHL.
Okay, who's a bigger cricket fan? You, Woody, or okay. your buddy? Yeah, Woody. <laughs> yeah, he's the one who talks about cricket when they first get to the office. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. who won last night? Okay, who, who, who is the winner next week? Are you the only two cricket fans in the office? I think so, yes. Yeah. <laughs> India last won the World Cup final 27 long years ago, and even this South African is cheering I'm for them tonight. For India because I'm sure they're going to beat Sri Lanka. You, you think India will beat Sri Lanka? I think so. Yeah. 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 There's a few Sri Lankans in Edmonton that might disagree with you. Well, that's, it's, it's, it's too bad. <laughs> and if India wins, oh yeah. man, it will be party. <laughs> and right now it's the talk of the town. Like you know, if India wins, like it will be public holiday for one day. It feels like we'll be seeing a completely new Eskimos lineup this spring with the club announcing even more changes today. They've signed import defensive lineman Julius Williams. He comes from the United Football League and has some NFL experience with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And watch out Ricky Ray, the newest Saskatchewan Rough Rider, knows all your moves. Cut loose by the Eskimos last month, defensive lineman Dario Romero has found a new home in Regina. The former Miami Dolphin had just one sack in 15 games last season. The Jays' home opener tonight versus the Twins. Bottom of the fifth, Jays up six zip and Jose Bautista takes it deep left for his first homer of the season. Not a bad start. Bottom of the eighth, Jays up 10-3. Number nine hitter J.P. Aaron Sevilla gets a home run off Dustin Hughes. Jays take the opener 13-3, and the towels are thrown in appreciation this time. And finally, with Rod Phillips riding off into the sunset on a golf course after 37 years of calling Oilers, we decided to find out how the new guy is faring in his very first season. And I like rolling the occasional R or two. I'm you sure. know, the Oilers are right back in this game. Yes, that's the voice of Jack Michaels, just a few periods from wrapping up his rookie campaign in the radio booth. Replacing a living legend has been a bit of a challenge. You're not going to be instantly embraced. I figured if I put my nose to the grindstone and, you know, and continue to work and continue to put forth my best effort, eventually, if not this year, then a year from now, or five years from now, or ten years from now, hey, Maybe there's a place at the end of the table, even if it's at the kids' table, for me, I'll take that. The friendly American works very hard before a game to be as prepared as possible, and he hasn't shied away from his southern slang, like calling a player's face his mush, or the blue line simply, the blue. I got some things that I imagine uh, could grade on people, but I, I just, I'd rather not say the same thing over and over again. Taylor Hall gets a couple of helpers, a couple of assists. He may have in your book a couple of apples. <laughs> Too much slang, hey? <laughs> oh well. He's working up to the kids' table. <laughs> you funny. like that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good.